Hey guys, I wanted to take the time to uh, go over supplies and how to handle coins. I got a little bit better camera video camcorder now, so this should be a lot clearer than what I was using on my other videos, and you'll you'll see the difference. Uh, so coins, you know, I felt the need to make a video on something like this only because I've been getting a lot of requests these days just from people I come across, people I talk to about, you know, uh, stuff they've acquired, you know, in an estate or something that was passed down from uh, someone, a, a loved one, you know, grandparents and, you know, great aunts and uncles. And they just don't know a lot about the, the hobby to, you know, feel like they need to consult with someone, you know, how do I care for my coins? How do I handle them? How much are they worth? You know, some of the common stuff that goes along with that. So for all the newbies out there, this video is going to help you out a lot more than say a lot of the, the seasoned pros who already know all this stuff. And then some, um, I'm kind of your armchair collector. As far as coins go, I do a lot of bullion more so than I do the numismatic collectible type of coins. But Let's go ahead and start with how to handle coins. Maybe you've been on eBay or other auction sites, and you know I'm going to use something like this Ike Dollar as an example. Okay, see the way I'm holding it? I'm holding it by the edges. You go on eBay, you go on these auction sites, they're selling some really nice high grade top flight stuff, and they're holding it in their palm or they're holding it on the edge. You know, it drives me nuts to see people do that, and you know. I look for a great deal. I look for key dates. But you know, you have a coin, you hold it like so. This is going to prevent a couple things, okay? It's going to prevent there being a fingerprints on the coin. And this, this is especially important for silver that tarnishes real easily. Gold, not so much. So I hold it on the edge. If I was using two fingers, I will just flip it around on its axis, okay? But, you know, try not to palm it because your, your hands, your fingers have natural oils. While they'll won't, they won't show right away, the fingerprints will show over time. So, you know, go ahead and hold them by the edges, okay? I don't have anything here to illustrate, but usually you'd have like a felt pad or a cloth surface. Something that's non-abrasive to put these on and to study them. Now, if you're getting into the hobby, of course, these are some of the things I'd illustrate to you. So that's how you hold the coins, okay? Number two, you do not want to clean coins for any reason, okay? It'll drop the value. If a coin has what in the industry they call numismatic value, okay? It means that it has more value than the overall intrinsic bullion value of the coin. So, for example, if these two pieces were silver, Obviously, these ones are circulated. I pulled them from the bank a couple days ago. They'll be worth what they call meld value. Okay, in this case, for a 40% silver Ike dollar, you know, they have them for a couple years, you're probably talking about $10, 11 $12 in bullion value. All right, if it's something of a collector value, it's a high grade, it's in perfect shape, it's going to command however much the market commands, which is over bullion value. So you want to keep your coins as safe as possible. And you see I have a little list of stuff that I'm going to talk about today. Because sometimes I'm forget forgetful and I go on rants on these videos like I'm doing right now. So I have a pair of cotton gloves. They're highly recommended if you're um, going to be handling the coins and putting them in any sort of type of storage. It's always good to wear these unless you're dealing with scrap stuff or clad you know, circulated pieces that you won't need these as much and they're surprisingly cheap. I don't know why more people don't buy them. Now there's a positive and a negative to everything. The cotton gloves are great, but you know, sometimes you get the cotton fibers off the gloves onto the coin. Okay. And people have, have the need to want to blow the dust or the little fiber off. Do not do that. Okay. Uh, you blow on a coin. It's no better than touching it with a finger because it's gonna leave particles of your breath on the coin and uh, after a while you're gonna get unsightly spots, dark tones, uh, and it's especially seen more prominently on copper items. Okay, so we've talked about how to handle coins. You wanna hold them on the edge. 
Use a nice clean felt surface, uh, not abrasive. Okay, so that's what we got there. Now let's talk about storage of your coins. Okay, as you can see, I have a couple different options of albums, folders, and the like. So I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna, whoops, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a look at your basic folder, which is widely available in a lot of shops. Dealers have them. Okay, this one is a Littleton folder. It's uh, that kind of like that dark pine green color. Okay, this one's quarters. This one has no dates in them, but you know they seat really well. I wouldn't I wouldn't use these folders for like mint state examples of coins. All right, the auto focus is a little slow. There we go. All right, I wouldn't use this for mint, mint state example of coins, but this is my silver folder. So this whole thing's full. So it seats the coins in there for displaying, but you could still touch the surface. These are all scrap pieces, by the way, so I have no problem touching them on the obverse face of the coin. So these are the most widely available. Bookstores would have them online. You know, you can buy them for like three, four bucks a piece. Sometimes you can find used ones for like pennies on the dollar. Uh, here's a album where you could put those two by twos in. I'll show you what those are. Actually I'll show you them right now. So you could slide the two by twos in there. You could write down dates, the type of coin, a general grade. You know these ones I bought. It's not my handwriting so I need to re-inventory these. Uh, let's see this one has like a combination of foreign and uh, some US coins. This is my older Canadian large cent page. But you know, that's what this looks like. And these are inexpensive as well. Some of them you could get under 10 bucks. I've had this one for a really long time. And you would be mindful to stick to the brands that'll have uh, the non, um, was it non poly, I believe? It's got a chemical, chemical in there that does harm to coins than good. So here's a Whitman. Whitman's a common brand for albums and folders. This one I bought used. This one is, uh, this one's about 50 years old. This thing is old and it's out of date. This is a Walking Liberty half dollar set. It's a short set from 1941 to 47. So this is going to be really easy to put together. I have a few in there already. Some doubles of walking liberties I have and I'm focusing on doing an about and circulated set for this. So I picked this one up for a dollar and I you know I picked up two of these and a whole bunch of other ones too. So keep your eye out on these older Whitmans. Um, they're very collectible actually, uh, albeit there's probably quite a few of them out there. Okay so here's another one. This is the from the popular brand Dansco. They have high quality stuff too. This is my type set. So it's partially filled, probably 60% of the way. And I don't know if this thing's gonna focus in too closely. So I got my cents page, half cents. Uh, you have the, the plastic slips that slide out, okay? And they protect the coin. Of course, in something like this, you don't wanna use high grade stuff. You know, you go ahead and get it certified and slabbed. All right, so that's what the Dance Co. looks like. This is the typeset from that brand. It's a, uh, the stock number is 7070. Very popular. Okay, as far as supplies, I got a couple, couple guides here. This is the 2012 Red Book, United States Coins. It's always good to have a source to get an idea of the pricing. By no means should you go buy this for all prices because it's all over the place, especially online. Um, you know, a little uh, rule of thumb is if you see something you like and, you know, it's within your price range, go ahead and buy it. But, you know, you, it's always good to be knowledgeable of what's out there so that way you don't overpay. You know, me, I get into coins and collecting the coins over bullion as something I'll keep, you know, for the rest of my life. I got the newest edition of the Cherry Pickers Guide. Since I roll search cents and nickels quite often, I love going through this. I have found some of the varieties that are in here. It'll make you some money too. Uh, as far as the individual storages of coins, this is a two by two. 
right there. It's two inches by two inches. This is what fits in that other album I showed you earlier. Um, I put three staples in these. Okay, and then something, if you could find it, a stapler, that'll do the flat cinched backs. Uh, when I when I stapled these, they had the bubbled wire on the back from the staple, and I have to flatten them out with uh, like a needle nose pliers or the uh, or some scissors, you know, whatever works. I use needle nose pliers because if they're flat, they're not going to scratch against the next one. Like th this is a storage container for two by twos. This whole section right here is weed sense, you know, for the illustration of this video. And they're going to be stacked back to back. You know, if you have the bubbled stapled backs on them, they're going to scratch against the next one. So if you have, say, some cents and you go into nickels and then silver dollars, the silver dollars are going to get scratched up from the staples, so you don't want the staple drag. That's a really, well, put a drag on the price of the coin if it's something of value. We have the Mylar uh, flips here. You put the coin in the sleeve. You've seen me use these on some of the Canadian silvers I have. Those are easy to use and those are safe for the coins. And uh, two by twos come in many different sizes. So, and oh, one other thing uh, for storage, if you have a whole bunch of something, you got the coin tubes, much like this here. This one I have labeled. This is all brilliant, brilliant uncirculated 64 Canadian cents. And there's actually a variety that you could find in here. If you find one, you know, they're worth a couple dollars. Magnifier, always important. Now I didn't, I couldn't find my jeweler's loop, but it's a 10 times. This one right here, you know, it's okay, it's better for reading books and stuff, but that is kind of like a basic rundown of some of the supplies. And you know what, if you were to go out and get the supplies minus the book, this is probably the most expensive thing here. It's like 40 bucks. Um, you could get them online for cheaper, of course, which I did, but you know, if you're gonna go to a bookstore, okay, there's something like that's a top end. You know, the, the two by twos, you could get them, sometimes you could get them for free with a free purchase at a dealer. You know, if you purchased a nice high end coin, they'll give you a whole bunch of these, which I do quite often. Uh, but that's kind of a rundown of some of the basic materials to get started in coin collecting. If you have any questions, guys, just go ahead and comment at the bottom of this video. Uh, plus, uh, you know, I'll have the link in the resource box uh, underneath this video. It's going to be right down here. Uh, if you want to click that, I always update with newer types of tips and tricks and, you know, how to find uh, silver in circulation and coin roll hunting techniques and stuff that I think you're, you'll like. Uh, yeah, but I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys think and uh, happy hunting and, uh, you know, have a nice year of collecting.